one word to portray 2020 is challenging because obviously with COVID, it was hard for creatives to get projects underway and develop. It's been, yeah, very up and down and very unexpected. So it's very challenging for artists and creatives to get their voices heard. When COVID-19 hit, there was very little time to prepare for the widespread damage that the pandemic would wreak. It was only until March 2020 that Australia sort of then witnessed the dangers of COVID-19. And since then, it has been an uphill battle for artists to get the support that they needed to survive. Week by week, there were new announcements and co-workers were scared of catching the virus. Yeah, there was a lot of fear around and a lot of uncertainty about the unknown. So at that point, I didn't even think about my future because it just felt like, oh, this will be over in like two weeks. Of course, how wrong we were and how quickly everything started changing. While the majority of people experienced the lockdowns as a short event, the restrictions created more damage for this industry and its workers. It's not only three days of a snap lockdown of no income, it's weeks and weeks of restrictions, which means pub gigs can't go ahead. Gigs get cancelled because people are uncertain of whether they have the turnout because people are afraid of this virus. If you can't tour and you can't play a show at a venue, uh, a musician won't have any kind of income. Musicians don't make money from CDs anymore um, and everything they make is from playing shows. The way that artists make their money is different to a lot of people and government support doesn't always cater for that or recognise that. There were a lot of projects and commercials that were just either postponed or just eliminated altogether. When the government brought out the JobKeeper initiative to help people in not very good financial situations, obviously it came for people who had full-time jobs. One of the biggest stresses in the performing arts sector was the wait time for both federal and state government assistance, particularly federal government assistance. But creatives and artists and collaborators really weren't in that fortunate position to get JobKeeper. It took a very, very long time to, and in actual fact it took a very long time for them to acknowledge the performing arts as a sector that was in desperate need of support. Well this was one of the, the big problems with JobKeeper and we made this very clear to the federal government that there were employees in our industry in particular that were not able to re uh, receive JobKeeper because of the criteria. So how did this impact creatives that were left behind? Creatives and artists weren't in the best of state financially and that really took a toll on their mental health. And you can see sort of the anxiety and stress of seeing the unknown of when this lockdown will stop and when COVID-19 will stop. Motivation was at an all time low. I mean, how do you keep training for a future that's so uncertain? Myself and many people I know were unhappy that sports events were allowed to take place while concerts and other artistic endeavors were not. How do you keep training for something that A, before wasn't really valued all that highly in Australia and B, now seemed near impossible to actually execute legally? The controversial hard border in Western Australia not only kept the virus out, but also worked to maintain the normality of life. Once WA started opening up again, bigger venues were more open to looking at WA artists for their entertainment. The music scene is picking up a lot. I know that shows are packed and since everyone was locked up for a while, people are much more willing to go out and see music. Which meant that there was a lot more opportunity for local artists than ever before to have main stage debuts, to have more gigs. The first thing that people turned to when we all went into lockdown was Netflix, was iTunes and Spotify and all those sorts of entertainment. They turned to uh, anything online that they could tap into to get a sense of you know who we are as people and that's what artists do whether it's music or visual art or, or, or performing arts and so I think it's really helped us to get a sense of value of what we contribute to society and how we can prosecute that argument to the funding bodies and to government and people who are making those sorts of decisions that help create an environment where the performing arts and artists can flourish and create work that's a positive outcome. So now we're going to have that missing link which has been the lack of a, uh, a major film studio. That film studio is going to be uh, a real, real important investment. 100 million plus, plus a $20 million 
um, incentive fund that it will be used to attract that volume of work into the future. I'm really excited about that. There are lots of people in government doing great things for the arts and there are lots of governments supporting the arts. Yeah, it definitely doesn't seem or feel like the arts is at the forefront of the conversation and the arts deserves to be there just as much as any other sector. Every town in, in the world there's amazing musicians who are out there playing and all it takes is just to go see them, like, comment and subscribe to their social media and that'll make a huge difference.